NFPA 13 categorizes obstruction requirements based on the vertical distance between the sprinkler and the obstruction. This distinction is crucial for understanding how to apply the rules correctly. First, when any part of an obstruction is within 18 inches vertically below the sprinkler deflector, the standard addresses obstructions to sprinkler discharge development. In these cases, NFPA 13 takes a conservative approach, applying the well-known three times and four times rules, as well as the beam rule. When the entire obstruction is located more than 18 inches below the sprinkler, NFPA 13 instead addresses obstructions that prevent sprinkler discharge from reaching the hazard. In these situations, the rules are more lenient and the wide obstruction rule generally applies. In this video, we will take an in-depth look at the beam rule, exploring its details and applications. The beam rule is one of the obstruction requirements outlined in NFPA 13. It applies when continuous obstructions are located within 18 inches vertically of a sprinkler and the only path for water is underneath the obstruction. Understanding this rule is crucial for ensuring proper sprinkler coverage and effective fire control or suppression. Before we discuss the details of the beam rule, let's address a fundamental question. Are we allowed to install a sprinkler close to a beam or similar obstruction? In general, NFPA 13 does not permit this for two key reasons. The first, which may come to mind immediately, is that if a sprinkler is placed too close to a beam, its discharge pattern may not develop properly. But the second, and perhaps more important reason, is that when a fire starts, the heat buildup and ceiling jet can delay sprinkler activation if it is positioned too close behind the beam. In other words, the sprinkler should not be positioned in the beam's shadow when considering ceiling jet movement. To prevent these issues, NFPA 13 provides specific guidelines for the required distance between the sprinkler and the obstruction, as well as the proper spacing between the deflector and the underside of the beam. This data, known as the beam rule, is presented in NFPA 13 through figures and tables specifying the requirements for each type of sprinkler. According to the beam rule, the higher a sprinkler is positioned above the bottom of an obstruction, the farther it must be placed from the near edge of the obstruction to ensure proper coverage. For example, for upright or pendant standard spray sprinklers, if B measures 2.5 inches, A must be at least 1 foot, or if B is 5.5 inches, A must be at least 2 feet. NFPA 13 allows the beam rule to be disregarded if its exception is applied. According to this exception, for a beam no wider than four feet, an additional sprinkler can be installed on the opposite side of the beam, provided that this new sprinkler is positioned within one half of the allowable sprinkler spacing from the center line of the beam. By applying the exception to the beam rule, NFPA 13 allows us to assume that one sprinkler covers half of the area beneath the beam while the other sprinkler covers the remaining half. For beams wider than 4 feet, the exception to the beam rule does not apply, meaning sprinklers on both sides only provide coverage up to the near edge of the obstruction. In this case, the sprinkler placement must follow the beam rule, or a supplemental sprinkler should be added to ensure coverage beneath the beam. coverage area of a supplemental sprinkler depends on the distance between its deflector and the ceiling. NFPA 13 establishes specific deflector to ceiling ranges based on the construction and the sprinkler types. For example, in unobstructed construction, standard spray sprinklers must be positioned within 1 to 12 inches from the ceiling. Therefore, when positioning a standard spray sprinkler under a beam in unobstructed construction, we must calculate the sum of the beam's depth and the distance between the deflector and the underside of the beam. 
If this total is 12 inches or less, the sprinkler will provide full coverage. However, if the total exceeds 12 inches, the coverage will be limited to the area directly beneath the beam. Now that we've reviewed the beam rule, let's explore how NSVCAD can assist in applying these requirements effectively. In this example, we will explore the capabilities of the beam rule tool in a 150 by 100 foot building with unobstructed construction. The layout provides details on the depth and width of the beams. The reference standard is NFPA 13, 2025 edition, and we are using standard spray sprinklers. We have chosen to install the sprinklers 4 inches below the ceiling. As previously explained, NFPA 13 specifies that the maximum allowable deflector to ceiling height is 12 inches. After clicking the insert button, the sprinkler and its coverage appear on the screen. Blue coverage indicates that the obstruction does not interfere with the discharge pattern. Red coverage signifies that the beam rule is not met, preventing water from reaching that area. By pressing the control key, the More Info window pops up, displaying relevant details. The software calculates B based on the beam's depth and the deflector to ceiling distance. Using this value, it then determines A from the referenced NFPA 13 table. Additionally, this window shows the current distance between the sprinkler and the beam. When the sprinkler is too close to an obstruction and does not meet the beam rule, the software displays its coverage extending only to the center line of the beam for beams no wider than 4 feet. This visual representation assists in implementing the beam rule exception properly. If the beam is wider than 4 feet, the software displays coverage only up to the near edge of the obstruction where the beam rule is not met. If the sprinkler is positioned under the beam, NSVCAD calculates the sum of the beam's depth and the minimum allowed distance between the deflector and the beam. If this total remains within the value permitted by the standard, the sprinkler provides full coverage, otherwise the software restricts coverage to the area directly beneath the beam. Finally, it's important to note that the software also considers cold soldering. It alerts the user by displaying CS next to the sprinkler, helping prevent placement too close to adjacent sprinklers when no obstruction is present between them. I hope you find this video helpful. You can download the software from nsvsoft.net 